Welcome to Rising Woman Leaders. I'm your host, Meredith Rahm, and I believe the time has come for women to share their gifts, their voice, and their stories. I love seeing women spiritually and financially empowered, thriving in their life's work, and doing what they love every day. I've gathered a community of women living their dreams to tell us their stories and inspire us to step into more courage, self-love, and feminine leadership. If you like this podcast, follow me on Instagram at Rising Woman Leaders and sign up for email updates at risingwomanleaders.com. Now get cozy with a journal and a cup of tea. I hope you enjoy today's show. Enrollment is now open for the Sovereign Circle, a nine-month feminine leadership initiation and high priestess sisterhood led by me and full with amazing guest teachers and three in-person day-long retreats in Sonoma County, California. We begin February 6, 2018, and I would love to connect more with you and see if it could be a good fit for you to join us. To learn more, simply visit risingwomanleaders.com, sign up to receive the program guide with all the call dates, the pricing, and more information, and you'll have the chance to speak one-on-one with me over the phone to explore this opportunity and see if it could be a good fit for next year. Sending you lots of love and holiday blessings. I hope you enjoy today's show. I'm here today with Amy Stanton, who is the founder of Stanton & Company, a PR and marketing agency based in Los Angeles, with a focus on promoting and building positive female role models and messaging for women. Since opening its doors in 2006, S&Co has built a roster of philosophy-driven brands, including exceptional female athletes lifestyle experts, and brands in the healthy, active living space. Before founding S&Co, Amy served as the first ever Chief Marketing Officer for Martha Stewart Living, Omni Media, and Director of Marketing and Communications for NYC 2012, New York's Olympic bid. She is the co-author of The Feminine Revolution, where you learn 21 ways to ignite your feminine power for a brighter life and better work. This book challenges outdated perceptions that feminine traits are weaknesses, redefining those characteristics as assets that should be championed. With an upbeat blend of self-help and fresh analysis, The Feminine Revolution reboots femininity for the modern woman and provides her with tools to accept and embrace her own authentic nature. Thanks for being here, Amy. Thank you for having me. And today is your official book launch. How are you feeling? (laughs) I have such a a mix of emotions. Overall, (laughs) super excited. And it's a little overwhelming. And I'm a little exhausted and mm. it's sort of, it's, it's sort of shocking that it's actually happening. You write a book and, mm. and going through the process, I'm definitely a pretty one foot in front of the other kind of person. And if I set a goal, I'm, I'm pretty focused on achieving it. And then what I hadn't taken into account, which is pretty obvious when we think about it, is that not only do you write a book, but then people actually read it. So there are aspects <laughs> of it that are a little shocking, but probably, again, should not be. Yes, yes the vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on top of all the to-dos, there's that piece of just, <laughs> this is, people are going to read this. What, that's, what's that going to be like? Mm-hmm. Is this your first book that you're publishing? It is my first book, and I, it's not. I always wanted to start my own business, so when I did that, in some ways, it was fulfilling a dream. In this case, it's not like I ever had any desire to write a book. It just came to me, and here we are. So um, I'm excited to see how it unfolds. I think it's part of something bigger and not something that necessarily I chose, but has sort of come to and through me. Yes. And the book is very much about femininity and embracing that in our lives. I wonder if you could speak to just what we see typically in our culture. What do we generally in society view femininity as and what um, 
also just inspired you to start researching this and bringing this to the forefront? Well, I'll start with that one, actually, because I think it sort of helps answer all the questions. Um, so about five years ago, this idea popped into my head that I wanted to write a book about femininity. Now that I can, I can barely say the word femininity. We're all, we're, I, you're really good at it, by the way. <laughs> um, I think by the end of this process, I'll really have it down. But I, I was dealing with my own personal challenges of feeling like maybe I wasn't really clear on who my authentic self was. And that, that started with this feeling that I'd become this real workaholic and that I had invested so much time and energy in my work life and my work persona. And over the years of working in advertising in New York and big marketing jobs had developed what I was starting to perceive as potentially a, a tougher more assertive personality in my work life, which was potentially spilling over into my personal life. And I was wondering if that was why I had not met Prince Charming. And if maybe I was bringing this strong version of Amy into my romantic relationships. And I started talking to lots of women about it and, and realizing that lots of women had the same experience of sort of modeling themselves after male leaders because historically leaders were male and taking on more masculine qualities in the workplace and then potentially carrying those over into other parts of our lives. Now, it's really important to say that I think masculine qualities are super important and valuable and productive and all good things. So, but what it made me aware of is that maybe because those were so valued and seen as powerful, I was suppressing or repressing some of my more feminine sides and qualities like my sensitivity and my emotionality and both of which are such a huge part of who I am. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crier and I'm really sensitive. I'm like mush on the inside. But after enough people telling me both personally growing up and in the workplace, oh, toughen up. Don't take things personally. Don't be so sensitive. I started developing a more... I guess, I guess tougher, a tougher shell on the outside that served me in a lot of different ways. And what I, the purpose of the book really was to begin an exploration personally, which I could then share with everyone else around what, why do we choose not to bring our feminine qualities forward? And so the book is about taking the idea that femininity and feminine qualities are weak and showing the historical connection between 21 different qualities, including sensitivity and vulnerability and emotionality and being mothering, showing why they've been considered feminine, showing why they've been considered weak, and then turning it on its head and showing that actually those are our greatest gifts. Those are our powers, our superpowers. It's our sensitivity that allows us to read a room and understand how people are feeling and to be able to be nurturing to the people around us because we know when they need them, need us. Um, so many things, a long, long list, but that, that instead of perceiving these as weaknesses, that we have an opportunity to actually embrace them as our powers. And so I realized that there are lots of important conversations going on around feminism and female empowerment and equal rights, but no one was talking about femininity. And in fact, certain women I would talk to actually were outwardly uncomfortable with the idea of femininity because they had convinced themselves that that was a weakness and that it was maybe even a step backwards, which I think is interesting and in some cases ironic. So here we are to say that no, it's not a step backwards and that actually there's a whole new way of thinking about this and each person, male or female, will think about femininity in a unique way and define it in a unique way for themselves. And hopefully this will encourage people to think differently about it so we can really put it to use in our lives. Mm -hmm. And did things start to shift in your own life just around your relationship to your femininity or how you started perceiving, sharing yourself out in the world um, as you wrote the book? 
Absolutely. Catherine, my writing partner, and I had a really interesting process even as we were writing because we'd find that certain qualities that we were talking about felt either aligned or even uncomfortable for us. And sometimes we would really, if anything, focus more on the ones that made us uncomfortable because we realized maybe those were things we needed to work on. And so that writing piece was interesting. And then, of course, any big project like this has its ups and downs. And Catherine and I had a great dynamic and it was really aligned and collaborative and respectful. And I'm so grateful for that because why would you do anything like this if it wasn't an enjoyable process? Um, but there definitely were moments and whether that's the conversation around the title and different points of view with the publisher, things like that, that were tough and, and that just required a lot of navigation. And I would ask myself in those moments, what's the feminine approach here? How do I bring grace to the situation? What's a softer way to communicate my point? Now, far from perfect at this point, you know, still a lot of work to do, but I did find that the times where I was able to actually implement some of the things that we were talking about, the result was better, everyone felt better, and then the times I wasn't, I had the, the pangs of regret. <laughs> and also just their learning moments, you know, where you go, I need to, in the next time around, think about a more graceful approach. Beautiful. I'd love to hear what are some of the key takeaways for someone who's going to read this book and... Um, what do you feel like are just a few like pieces or tips or things that they may get from reading this book? Well, one of the things we're excited about is the way the book reads with 21 different qualities is that each person will align with certain qualities and not with others. And certain things will resonate, other things will not. And that's part of the fun of really understanding our femininity and how it's the role it's playing in our lives and also the potential for it to play in our lives. Um, I think the overall feeling we hope to create is that through embracing our feminine qualities, we can find a more authentic way of life and that we are going to be liberated to feel more like ourselves. So in terms of actual tips, you know, I, I obviously would say starting, the starting point is to read and explore the book and, and start to think in a more active, conscious way about femininity and the role it plays. And, and if there are places where you're coming up against things where you, you feel like, oh, I can't show this side of myself because I don't want to be perceived as weak or I don't think it's going to be welcome here or this person's not going to be able to handle my emotions or it's going to be embarrassing if I cry in front of this person and, in, and, and just being more aware on a day-to-day -day basis of when and how these things are happening so that you can start to make shifts. And, and we say it's not about tomorrow turning into a totally different person and heading on into the office with your nail polish and, you know, <laughs> this new feminine being, although that's mm. totally fine too, but, but really it's about a, a subtlety and nuance and, and applying it in ways that may or may not be overt. You know, so much of this is internal work and being able to, to even, even if it's about messages we're telling ourselves and not beating ourselves up for that moment that we got a bit emotional in that conversation. Or, you know, as women, we do so much beating ourselves up. And it's so typical where we would have something happen and feel a certain way about it and be thinking about it constantly. Like We hope this liberates the reader from some of those things because instead of going, oh, it's so embarrassing that I cried at the office today, you go, you know what? Yeah, it wasn't, I wasn't thrilled to cry at the office, but I recognized that I wasn't in control of it. I didn't choose to cry at the office. I didn't wake up this morning going, oh, I hope I burst into tears in front of my boss today. That was not a deliberate move. 
Um, so re recognize that it was not intentional. Um, there are things you can do even in terms of the crying that help maybe soften the blow if your boss is uncomfortable. Like just acknowledge, you know, I'm emotional because I really care about this job or I really care about the work I'm doing. Hopefully that's the takeaway. Um, but then to be able to move on, you know, more easily instead of feeling like, oh, I'm never going to get that promotion because I was emotional and I was judged, you know, we're judging ourselves half the time. Yes. And the only way that these kinds of things are really going to be valued is if we create an environment where these qualities are valued. And that yes. takes each and every one of us stepping forward and in each other welcoming our sensitivity, our emotionality, you know, think of all the language, the verbiage that's been used to describe women that's negative, girly, or she's being so mothering, or she's such a flirt. You know, these are not words that in the context of either, or, or she's such a seductress. You could use those same words in the context of men, and they wouldn't have the same weak, negative connotation. And so how much of this are we doing to ourselves? And what can we do to help shift the environment so these things are actually welcomed or embraced? Yes. I just had a conversation last night with a friend of mine who had to do some pitches for getting investments for his company. And he said that it was so like unfamiliar to him and he really almost just like put on this facade of masculinity and kind of like had to put on this role. And one of the first people he was pitching to was just really open and honest with him, a woman, and said, I can't feel your heart at all. Like, I don't, I don't sense like this is something that you really, um, something is off. And it was just like this total wake up for him that actually those qualities of like, I really care about this or I'm being myself or um, can be so powerful, like, and actually give us the results that we are looking for. I love that story. I'm going to end up retelling that story too. It's <laughs> so amazing because that's an example of a cultural shift, you know, yeah. and also that, that in that case, a woman happened to be in a power position where she was actually a decision maker and she could require that heart be a part of the conversation. Yes. That's pretty amazing. I love it. Yes. I love that story. But it's yes. so true. I mean, it, in the end, I really do hope that it's a shift not just among women feeling more allowed, I guess, or, or welcome to bring those qualities forward, but that men see the value in it too. And I think it's, it's been a confusing time for men because they're told on one hand to show their vulnerability and their sensitive sides and we all want to see their emotions, but then at the same time we want them to be the man. We want them to take care of us and be in control and it, I think, creates a lot of confusion. You know, it's, and if anything, I hope this sparks a conversation between men and women that allows us all to find the way together. Yes. Can you tell us a little about the world you envision? Like what, in an ideal world, what do you envision for men, for women, for leaders? For What would that look like? Well, it's hard to, to, have to answer that question right now without alluding to the current political landscape, but without getting too deep into it, I do truly believe that one of the biggest threats facing society today is toxic masculinity, which is playing out in so many different ways. And that is not the productive, powerful, important masculinity that we all value. It's masculinity gone wrong where it's po abuse of power it's it's creating this connection between humans it's it's creating all kinds of separation um and anger and frustration and and that's that's the source of so many of our problems and i can see a world where more feminine qualities are valued in a way that allow, that can heal some of those problems where 
real conversations and communication as possible or where the way forward doesn't require a fight, but actually allows for two people to come together and resolve things. You know, it's just, I'm it's sort of watching the world just become more and more at each other's throats in so many different ways, whether that's politically or culturally or ethnically or racially. And it's just, it's so tough right now. So, so I'm not saying femininity can solve all of those problems, but I do think a feminine approach and more celebration of feminine strengths and qualities would allow a more graceful way to navigate through a lot of these things and help bring people together and, and create more listening versus speaking and, and more alignment. Mm -hmm. It's just not the current environment's not allowing for that. So that's what I dream of. Um, you know, in terms of romantic relationships, it's a really, it's a really confusing time because even though I'm a strong and competent woman, I have this very soft, gentle, sensitive, vulnerable side that I want to be able to show in the context of a romantic relationship. And what that requires is a polar opposite on the masculine side that I feel like I can truly operate that way and still be safe and be, and that there's balance and sort of the yin yang. And you know, that requires me taking a leap of faith and showing that side in order for that other piece to show up, you know, and that's, that's a personal challenge for me sometimes because either I'm, allowed myself to be programmed this way where I, I do take control and I am able to handle it and I don't necessarily always want to. So it's interesting. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can kind of through our daily lives, just be aware of our patterns and our habits and things that are working and serving us and the things that aren't. And that you, there's certainly been a lot of mixed messages communicated to women because we're given a hard time for being, too controlling, but then we're also given a hard time for being too agreeable. So yeah. how do we strike the balance, you know? Yeah. And I can see for a woman who does have high ambitions in the, the career, in her career or the workplace, that there can be a shift or a challenge probably with romantic relationships where it's like we need a polarity in romantic relationship for there to be that attraction and often it's the masculine feminine usually the woman is in the feminine role um, and to be at work all day having to put on a facade and then you know going on a date and like how it's just could get confusing it does <laughs> Well, and, and I'm super clear, you know, it's funny, I don't know if you're familiar with Pat Allen, but she's a longtime expert in sort of masculine, feminine behavioral patterns and male-female relationships, and she has pretty strong points of view on things, but she's very adamant about the need to make a decision about whether in the context of any relationship, you have to choose to be the masculine or the feminine. It doesn't mean that over time you don't have a little bit of leeway where you can kind of toggle a bit, but that in the grand scheme of things, you cannot be both the masculine and the feminine. You can't have it both ways. And she simplifies it and says that the masculine needs to be respected and the feminine needs to be cherished. And it really resonates for me. I'm super clear that I fall into, I've, in the context of a romantic relationship, I want to be the feminine. I want to be cherished. And it's less about respect and control and being in charge. And yet my habits, because I'm used to running a business and being in charge of so many people need some adjustment sometimes, you know, cause I have to allow for someone else to take charge and I have to create the space for someone to recognize that I'm okay with that, you know? And it's, yeah. it is, it's funny. Marianne Williamson talks about, after a work day, when in the context of dating, after a work day, you're supposed to take, I think it's 20 minutes to either take a bath or listen to some music, but to sort of exit the feminine, the masculine persona from the workplace 
and move into your feminine before you meet up with a romantic partner or date, etc. And I think it's so interesting. Uh, and I, I've definitely experimented with that. And it helps, by the way, because you can truly shift the way you're feeling about things. I mean, even the, the way you started this session made such a huge difference for me. And I thought, God, I should do this like 50 times a day, <laughs> breathing, setting intentions, basic things, you know, but allowing myself to just kind of get back into this more centered, grounded place. And it's easily forgotten because we're going, 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 you know, yeah. but the, the value of that is humongous. And, and there's a part of me that also wonders if over time we might actually be able to bring these two things more closely together where I can allow myself to be more feminine and softer and gentler all day, every day, maybe not exclusively because there are definitely times where the other part of me is, needs to come in kick some ass. There's that will always be the case. But to bring more alignment where that that part of me can be me everywhere instead of having to shift. Yeah. I think that is the ideal that in the workplace that there is place for the femininity. Don't need to put on a facade. Um and yeah, I think a lot of women who are seeking relationship and having trouble with that I think that simple idea of just, okay, what does it look like for me to really soften and allow and rest into this feminine nature to create um, that attraction, magnetic polarity? Yeah. Yeah. So I I really, I find it fascinating, honestly, because I've done some work with this amazing tantric expert, Don Cartwright, and she talks a lot about that and has really specific tools for it, you know, and it's, it, they're such simple things, but it really creates a shift. And when I've been actively doing work with her, I can feel how differently I'm showing up in the world and energetically what I'm attracting is different, you know? Mm-hmm. Wonderful. I wanted to ask too about just the writing process of your book and Working with a co-author, um, was the writing process pretty smooth and easy? Did you come up against any writer's block or staying on track, or you know, the vulnerability of releasing your your you know deep shares? Any of that? There's no question that as much as I'd worked with a lot of authors and thought I understood the process, that the actual process of doing it yourself takes it to a whole other level, and it. There are things that you couldn't possibly predict because they're new. And so originally when I came up with this idea, I just thought I'll approach it the same way I do everything, which is I'll learn how it works. I'll figure out how to do it. I'll surround myself with the right people to make it possible. And that was like five years ago. And then and at around that time, maybe a year after that, a mutual friend introduced me to Catherine and said, you both have shared passion in this area, come from different perspectives, but we have a lot of alignment. And the minute Catherine and I met, we were really not only excited about the bigger picture, but it was clear there was so much kind of synergy and, and mutual respect and passion. And it just seemed like, I knew she'd play a role somehow in this. And then last year, four years or however many years had gone by, I'm thinking, how is this possible? I'm still talking about this. And every year saying, this is the year and it still hasn't happened. And it's not really in my personality because I usually, if I'm going to do something, I just do it. But this was felt like such a massive undertaking. And so we sat down again, had another great conversation. And I just said, let's just do this together. And it's funny because when I first started my business, I had a business partner and for the first two years. And that was, I haven't had a business partner for 10 years. And there were aspects of that were, were great, other aspects that were challenging. And I sort of thought to myself, oh boy, like it almost is once we got the process going, I just signed up for another partnership with almost not without realizing it because I was thinking of this as in its own separate way. And we had so, such a great time doing it. I mean, we, we both were really committed and um, 
very, again, respectful of each other. She's brilliant. I felt so fortunate to be partnering with someone who had the the smarts, but also the, the experience. And she was an academic and taught women's studies before she had these big roles in strategy at Disney, rebranding princesses, like huge undertakings, things that are important in the world. Um, and so we were definitely complementary, and I, I don't think there was a science to our process. We sort of, we, we made decisions about which chapters each of us would sort of take the lead on, and then we'd trade things back and forth, and um, it was super collaborative, and, and we'd push each other in different ways, and at times, certainly each had our own moments of being very passionate or having strong opinions about things, but we'd always be able to work through it and find a happy, not even a happy medium, but resolution. And so I've definitely found myself throughout the process, even if there were, there weren't really challenges so much with her, but some of the other aspects of it, just really putting these practices into place and, and yet, in, and yet just enjoying it. There was a seamlessness to it, partially because we said this has to come out in the year of 2018 and the publisher gave us this outrageously short period of time to write it, I think not thinking we were really going to be able to do it. And we did. So because I, there was not, it, to me, it was like uh, how many years in a row am I going to say, this is the year. This really is the year, you know, this yeah. is how it had to come out this year. So um, I'm thrilled that it actually is. And, um, and I, I think that's because Catherine and I in a very, aligned way or completely dedicated to doing whatever was necessary to make that happen. Yeah. Having accountability like that is amazing. It really and is. Yeah. For me, when I was writing my book, it was, it really wasn't until I hired an editor and there was someone there expecting submissions from me on certain days. And I was like, okay, I got someone on my team now and we can talk about this and brainstorm and um, just having someone there expecting the next submission. It's just, yeah, doing it on our own is so hard in many ways. And I think a big piece of the feminine is collaboration. What does it look like to work together and to help each other and to not just have this idea that we need to do it all on our own? It's so true. It's part, we actually kind of love that that's a part of our story because I couldn't agree with you more. It's like this whole thing is ultimately about bringing women together to spark a conversation and make change and allowing us individually to do that, but also to work as a team. And so in a more micro way, Catherine and I did that in the birthing of this baby <laughs> and it really I think it's it reflects it you know it reflects not just me my point of view and all these women that I've interviewed but of like a real shared collective approach and she's also been great I mean among so many other things because of her experience in women's studies, she also has been a really, she's been able to guide the process and say like, oh, this is an area where we could run into problems if people take this the wrong way, or if we, we don't want this to be misinterpreted. And, and at a time where people, for good reason, are more sensitive than ever, and I say that in a positive way, since as we know, I think sensitivity is great. Um, we have to just be really respectful of that. So it, there were so many aspects of the partnership that I think worked where we each brought different things to the table and, and made it happen. Yay. How was it the moment when you saw the book for the first time, like fully designed, fully printed? Shocking. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I mean, I had seen the galleys of course, and I, I loved the cover, but to actually hold the book in my hand and feel the cover I, I was like, I was kind of shocked. I mean, it really wasn't, it was so much more beautiful than I ever imagined. Mm. Yeah. Such a Obviously, and it felt more real, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's here. And what is the plan now? Are you going on a book tour, doing events? What's happening with the book? And also, where can people find it and buy it? 
So all of the above, we are definitely doing a lot of speaking and we will be visiting a bunch of different cities. We're sort of mapping that out as we speak and um, starting with Los Angeles and New York, first and foremost. Um, and then ultimately, you know, we're doing everything and anything possible to spread the word. So want to spark conversations, want to hear from everyone. I mean, this is one of the things that's so fascinating to me is I, I really love hearing different points of view and stories and connection points. And, and, and even if it's not aligned, you know, we're, I'm, I'm glad some people have other points of view that may not be in agreement with things that we're saying. And I'm happy about that too, because it actually fuels the conversation. It's available on Amazon and all major retailers. So barnesandnoble.com, et cetera. Um, and then social media, Feminine Revolution book on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And we're just, we're kind of seeing where this goes. You know, I think that there's, there's so much potential in so many ways to, whether that's shifting culture in a workplace or whether that's helping shift dynamics in individual relationships or whether that's even thinking again about how this could impact our political landscape. It's, it's almost like, I think this is why I wake up every morning feeling like there's an infinite amount to do is because there is, <laughs> there's no, there's no end in sight, thankfully. Hmm. Yeah. And I think having a, bigger vision like this to work towards and to inspire you every day is what can be just so fulfilling in our lives to have something that we are contributing to like this. Yeah. And I know there are a lot of women out there who are right there doing this work and so ready for this and, um, and it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. So do you have any closing words, any final takeaways you'd like to share with the audience before I close this conversation? Well, most importantly, just really grateful to you for helping share this message. And I hope that women are and men are inspired because I think, again, both men and women have an opportunity to really grow and learn from this journey of exploring our feminine qualities and embracing them. And and we'd love to hear from everyone. So, um, you know, I, I think at a time like now when we're seeing so many pain points, again, politically, but in society and so much, um, so many disconnections, I really hope that this can help bring people together and unite people in a way that allows for open conversation and shared opinions but also real mutual respect and and more grace in the world yeah yeah and i can i've been reflecting on how in many ways the political climate we've been in has caused this surge of the opposite this people coming into their voice and their power and seeing okay now it's really time. <laughs> and um, yeah, and thank you for doing this work and for sharing this message, for writing the book um, and doing your own personal work of just bringing femininity into your embodiment and into your workplace and the company that you run. So yeah, and for everyone listening, I'll just take a moment and invite us all to come back into our breath. And to just take any seeds of wisdom or gems that you wish to take with you from this conversation today, to just feel that in your heart, knowing that we are all weaving this web, that so much change is happening, feeling that connection, that web, the, all the women in the world, the men too, doing their work creating this shift into a more feminine future. So I'll just bring my hands to my heart and bow. Namaste. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. 
Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to our show today. We would love to hear what you think. Take a moment to hop on over to iTunes and leave us a review. We'd be so grateful to receive it. Until next time, namaste. Namaste.